Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. Hey now, what happened yesterday? XRP trading at over a dollar. It seems like, uh, you know, price is flying and I can't even keep track of what's going on here. So um, I'm going to put it on the hourly, guys. This is XRP on the hourly yesterday. You guys can see uh, we did see huge movement for XRP. It reached a high of uh, almost a dollar ten, reached about a dollar nine, and then retraced back to this level down here, uh, ninety five cents per XRP. Uh, right now we're trading in and around that dollar range. However, this is looking quite promising. So on the hourly. We are forming what is looking like a bullish pennant. Bullish pennants usually mean that price trend is going upward. We had that huge knockback right down here. Volume is getting lower slowly as we're moving forward. So you guys can see down here over the last few hours, heavy volume. And uh, now we're seeing the volume uh, slowing down. So XRP trading at $1, you know, uh, only a few days ago we were trading in and around 80 cents. And it really hasn't taken that long uh, for XRP price to move. So in yesterday afternoon's video, I was talking about that fractal pattern that we saw back from 2017 and uh, just noticing some similarities there. If you guys didn't catch that video, I'll link it up here in the top right hand corner. And I mean, you know, if we are following that fractal pattern, if we if we do end up following it, we could see XRP make its way back up to the 0.5. So uh, that would bring us to a dollar 23 before we really start to see meaningful sell offs and price uh, declines a little bit. So that is, uh, I mean, if we were to follow that fractal uh, very closely, that is what we could see. We're already starting to see a bit of uh, rejection here at the 0.382. Um, so let's see if we can break through that guys, get up to the 0.5, see if we can maintain price here at the 0.5 or uh, if XRP will come right back down here to the 0.236, trading it at around 85 cents. And BTC, I mean, what happened to BTC? We are seeing a bit of movement upward, although not as much as XRP. And so could we possibly be witnessing a decoupling is something taking place here. Here's the crypto market cap, uh, market cap up nearly uh, towards $1.9 trillion in Bitcoin, losing its dominance now, just shy of 45%. Uh, we can see in the last 24 hours, Bitcoin is down, Ethereum is down, but we have the altcoins up and uh, XRP leading the pack here at 13.13%. So interesting to say the least. Uh, we've got Russia saying, you know, Bitcoin has just been a minefield to navigate. The Bank of Russia has expressed concerns over the increasing number of local investors pouring their money into Bitcoin. So the Russian central bank has once again reiterated its negative stance on Bitcoin with one of the bank's top executives comparing the cryptocurrency with a pyramid scheme. So here's the narrative coming out of Russia. I mean, whether they're doing what they're saying is a separate issue, but here's what they're saying. Uh, so here is uh, one of the uh, deputy governors of the Bank of Russia, Shvetsov. He said that uh, local investors have been increasingly pouring their money into alternative financial instruments that he referred to as uh, technological financial pyramids, stating that Bitcoin is just one such pyramid scheme. He said that many retail investors expect huge returns from cryptocurrency investments, selling their real estate holdings or taking loans in order to invest in Bitcoin, despite the huge risk of losing all their money. And can you believe he had the gall to say this? There is no need to walk where you are not protected by the Russian Federation. This is coming from that uh, deputy governor of the Bank of Russia, where your money would be simply taken away and you will not be able to do anything about it. So the Russian government warning their people about investing in Bitcoin. Interesting considering I think I remember hearing something about the Bank of Russia getting into Bitcoin specifically. I could be um, misremembering that, but if you guys uh, do have a source for that, please do put it down in the comment section. Um, and then there was that story from yesterday, that $600 million worth of crypto tokens stolen off the Poly Network. If you guys didn't catch that video uh, just a few minutes ago, I did link it in the top right hand corner. Apparently the hackers have just given back some money. This from Michael at Val 5 links. The Poly Network hackers stole over 600 million in crypto from the platform and they returned a substantial amount of loot on Wednesday, which was yesterday. The total sum returned is about $342 million and roughly represents almost 50% of the 613 million drained in arguably the biggest crypto heist in history. The cross-chain DeFi platform received a return loot in USDC, BUSD, SHIB, and FEI tokens. All return assets were paid through the Binance Smart Chain, Ethereum, and Polygon uh, at Poly's request, according to a report. So I guess the hackers said, you know, well, 300 million is, I guess, a pretty good score. We'll return the other 300 maybe and you'll leave us alone. <laughs> in the wake of the initial heist, which occurred on Tuesday, 
Poly Network called for the black listing of three addresses linked to the alleged hackers. So Polygon already obviously took some measures to uh, track down these hackers. And, um, you know, the hackers turned around, gave them back $300 million. And even Tom Robinson down here, chief scientist of blockchain analytics firm Elliptic, believes the hackers return the tokens out of fear. He says uh, it is difficult to discreetly handle stolen cryptocurrency due to blockchain transparency and analytics. According to Robinson, the hackers concluded that the safest option was just to return the stolen assets. In addition, some market observers believe that the partial centralization of decentralized finance came into play here. So uh, just an updated uh, piece to this story. One of the biggest hacks, or, or arguably, as they're mentioning in this CoinSpeaker article, the biggest hack in cryptocurrency history. And the hackers happened to return half of the amount, which was uh, $300 million approximately, back to the Poly Network. Interesting. We've got this update too, and uh, you know, this is something that we should be paying attention to with regards to the Ripple and SEC case. And I'm gonna talk about this a little later in this video. This is from uh, James K. Fillin here on Twitter, uh, giving us the latest breaking news on the Ripple SEC case. So uh, with regards to the case, the SEC has requested two additional days until Tuesday, August 17th, 2021, to submit a motion to seal the exhibits filed with Ripple's letter challenging the SEC's improper assertion of the deliberative process privilege. And uh, here's just a letter to that effect. Coming from the SEC's attorney, George Tenriero, uh, pursuant to part I.G of the court's individual practices, Plaintiff Securities and Exchange Commission respectfully requests that the deadline for the SEC to file a motion to seal, if any, with respect to exhibits filed with defendants August 10th, 2021 letter, motion, yada, yada, to extend two business days from Friday, August 13th to Tuesday, August 17th. So they are actually uh, asking for a uh, for an extension. The thing that is great about this, and I was hearing some murmurings about this on Twitter, is that some people were suggesting this could be close to the end. And I'll tell you why in a second. So James K. Fillin replying to his own tweet here and uh, some people just thanking him for this tweet. Bond Crypt XRP also uh, mentioning this. So we are all seeing the way the SEC is handling the lawsuit and how they are literally non-compliant, making a complete mockery of the judicial system right before everyone's eyes. Uh, and he tags John Deaton and uh, Jeremy Hogan and John uh, James Fillon in this. Why doesn't the courts slash judge rule harshly on them? If we all see it, so why can't they? I'm no lawyer, but the feedback, comments, and tweets portray the feelings of investors. I would have thought some form of reprimand would have already been forthcoming still, not present documents, plus not even disclosing which assets Poloniex were buying and selling, considered securities in the settled lawsuit. Are we missing something legally here we are not privy to? The lawsuit itself doesn't seem to be in a level playing field at all, but rather one-sided thanks in advance. And so uh, just, uh, you know, an observation here from Bondcrypt XRP. And so I just wanted to show you this because I thought it was kind of cheeky. The SEC a couple of days ago said today we announced that Poloniex LLC has agreed to settle charges for operating an unregistered online digital asset exchange in connection with its operation of a trading platform that facilitated buying and selling of digital asset securities. Well, we all know about this. David Schwartz responding with this meme here. Poloniex has agreed to settle charges for selling digital assets that were securities. The SEC, which assets were securities, right? And uh, if you're not looking at the screen, you kind of have to take this meme in visually to really understand it. A bit of a flippant look from this gentleman here, and uh, the girl asks again, right? Basically, David Schwartz suggesting the SEC not being transparent with uh, how uh, they are classifying digital assets in the space. Uh, as we all know, this has been a problem, and uh, I mean, I don't have to dwell on this anymore. I thought I'd just bring this uh, David Schwartz response to this. I'm going to keep going because we do have more news here with regards to crypto regulations uh, in the United States broadly. So this from Michael at Val5 Links. U.S. Congressman Patrick McHenry has slammed the U.S. Security and Exchange Commission for asking for jurisdiction over all crypto exchanges, including non-securities ones. He called it a blatant power grab that will hurt American innovation. So this from Bitcoin. Com. Republican Congressman Patrick McHenry from North Carolina released a statement Wednesday in response to a letter SEC Chairman Gary Gensler sent to Elizabeth Warren about cryptocurrency regulation. Senator Warren shared the Wednesday letter Gensler wrote, I believe we need additional authority. Here's a quote. I believe we need additional authority to prevent transactions, products, and platforms from falling between the regulatory cracks. 
We also need more resources to protect investors in this growing and volatile sector. McHenry's statement on Gensler's power grab over digital asset exchanges explains that the SEC chairman is asking for jurisdiction of all exchanges and digital assets, not all of which are securities. The congressman emphasized Chairman Gensler's latest move to Congress for jurisdiction over non-security exchanges is a blatant power grab that will hurt American innovation. Given the distinct nature of digital assets, policymakers must be thoughtful and deliberative in legislation in this space. McHenry then mentioned a bill he introduced, H.R. 1602, to eliminate barriers to uh, Innovation Act, which the House representatives passed on April 20th and is now waiting for the Senate to take up. The bipartisan bill uh, to create a digital asset working group comprised of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, or the CFTC, the SEC, and market participants to bring much needed regulatory clarity to the digital asset ecosystem, McHenry detailed. Elaborating, and here's another quote, we need smart policy made through a transparent process to ensure innovation and job creation continue in the U.S. and don't need another backroom deal between Gensler and Elizabeth Warren. Boom. I'm glad he called him out on this. It certainly does seem like a blatant power grab, which would definitely stifle crypto innovation in the United States. We need uh, this sector to be open. It is still, um, you know, we're still kind of going through teething pains and, uh, you know, you don't want to stifle it as it's growing. It's kind of like, you know, feeding a child too much sugar or coffee or drugs or whatever, you know. It, it's, it will stifle the growth and uh, overall... It would be in the best interest of the United States to have the best opportunity, the most chances to grow this industry as robust, as strong as possible. So I get it. I get Patrick McHenry's sentiments. Um, so here's another one from Coindesk. A great statement here. By taxing crypto, the U.S. government has accepted it's here to stay. So this is the silver lining. This is kind of the underlying read between the lines. Uh, statement message that they're conveying. I think crypto just experienced a major watershed and it's time to recognize the silver lining. Uh, crypto suddenly became part of the U.S. Senate's debate over the infrastructure bill, which I've been talking about over the last several days. Out of seemingly nowhere, the infrastructure bill introduced an estimated $28 billion tax on the crypto industry. But here's what Jeff Bandman said. He's a former senior official at the Commodity Futures Trading Commission uh, who led the agency's initial virtual currency and blockchain work and was founding director of Lab CFTC, his currently principal at Bandman Advisors. He said, here's the silver lining, and for me, a huge aha moment. If the U.S. government thinks it is going to raise $28 billion in taxes from the crypto industry in the next 10 years, it means crypto is here to stay. So that means, that at least is showing that uh, they are not going to ban anything or do anything uh, drastic to uh, really kind of kill crypto in the U.S., it means crypto is going to be a new cornerstone of the U.S. economy. And so uh, this is a very optimistic uh, viewpoint from Jeff Bandman. The government didn't abolish tobacco. It taxes it. The government taxes alcohol. The government taxes capital gains and income and all kinds of other things. It does not tax illegal narcotics. It does not tax prostitution, except in Nevada. And once government gets used to receiving tax revenue, it is almost unprecedented for that to stop. So uh, a very astute observation. The aha moment for Jeff Bandman. It is here to stay. So interesting to note that perspective as well. And BitBoy Crypto, I mean, despite how much we uh, kind of laugh at his uh, insider information comments that he makes on his channel. Uh, you know, he really kind of came out here on this around the blockchain discussion they were having and uh, really kind of came out and uh, changed his tune in uh, in terms of how he viewed the XRP community. Specifically, XRP Darren retweeting out this from uh, Digital Asset Buy on Twitter. Music to my ears, if you guys didn't catch this. Listen to what Ben Armstrong has to say, aka BitBoy Crypto. Uh, here's what he had to say. You know, which banks are going to be choosing to use XRP. Uh, th they chose a long time ago. This has been in the plan for a long time. And you know those people in the XRP army that we all call crazy for a long time? Uh, those chickens are coming home to roost. Because the fact is, uh, whether or not they were going on pure hopium or not, a lot of those people are gonna turn out to be correct. The banks chose this a long time ago. And to answer Austin's question, yes, exactly when this is over, we are going to see much more adoption of XRP. You're seeing this across the world right now. Uh, we had so South Korea, Singapore, Japan. We've seen this just in the last few days, Thailand, uh, an SBI, by the way, an Indian bank. So we're seeing 
all across Asia right now, this start picking up, picking up, picking up. We're seeing RippleNet being used. We're seeing ODL, the on-demand liquidity, former, you know, I think that was uh, X current, maybe. I can't remember anymore after doing that video this weekend. But this has already happened. Now, here's some exciting stuff. You guys want to hear some exciting stuff? Yeah. I'm being told. By the middle of September, we will have resolution of this. Things are changing very rapidly, though. We could see resolution to this much earlier than that. And if you think about everything we've talked about for XRP and the price pumps and where this is going, the middle of September would be the absolute best possible time for this news to come out. This will be right as Bitcoin is going parabolic. This will be right when altcoins are picking up steam. And if you think any of this is on accident, you are not paying attention. If you think, like Arcane Bear does, and I love Arcane Bear, he's a great guy. I love him. I love when he comes on the channel. I love his opinions. I love I'd his love setup. Too, I love everything man. about it. And I, and, and, and I would agree with everything you said. I want to be very clear about that a, a while back. But the fact that you think that it, Ripple is battling the SEC on merits, it's just incorrect. This decision has already been made. There are people higher than the SEC that are bringing these decisions. This is not the SEC sitting around determining whether they think Ripple's a security. There are much bigger things at play. Boy, it seems like Ben Armstrong has uh, learned quite a bit over the last month or so. I mean, he still is getting some facts wrong, like uh, SBI is not an Indian bank. Um, nevertheless, he is learning more about XRP, about the XRP army, that we're not all crazy. Um, you know, he called us crazy for a while. A lot of the Bitcoin community did. And I'm kind of glad, you know, in a way, I mean, even if he is doing it for the subscribers, for the viewers, um, you know, jumping on the XRP bandwagon, he is still going against that Bitcoin narrative that uh, a lot of those maximalists uh, want to kind of grasp and, uh, you know, discredit XRP because of X, Y, and Z. We know all the reasons. Uh, he is going against that. He's going against the grain and uh, educating them to a degree of how XRP is going to be utilized. I mean, all the things we talk about in the XRP community, all the things that we've known for years now, Ben Armstrong or BitBoy Crypto, is getting out to all his Bitcoin maximalist friends. And you notice how we said September is going to be that time where we really see something change. Bitcoin is going to be rallying and altcoins are going to be following along with it. Uh, XRP obviously taking up some steam as of late. And so September, not that far away. It's interesting he does give that timeline because I also wanted to mention this tweet, guys, from Stefan Hubert here on Twitter. Remember what the last activities were before not only the Telegram case was settled, motions to seal documents, and he retweeted out his tweet here from August 2nd. In the Telegram versus SEC case, also handled by Judge Netburn, the last regular letter to the judge was written on June 23rd, 2020, and I believe I did talk about this in a video at that time, or um, maybe about a month ago, maybe it was in July, a request from Telegram to seal additional documents. Three days later, the settlement was announced with a proposed judgment. Now, with this new information too, right, the market rallying, um, BitBoy Crypto thinks he's hearing something. I mean, I don't know how uh, legitimate his sources are. Mid-September, he's thinking something is brewing. We have this from Stefan Hubert talking about the Telegram case, and the last letter they submitted was a request from Telegram to seal additional documents. If you guys remember uh, earlier on in this video, I talked about the latest development in the Ripple XRP case uh, against the SEC. The SEC has requested two additional days until Tuesday, August 17th, to submit a motion to seal the exhibits filed with Ripple's letter challenging the SEC's improper assertion of the deliberative process privilege. So they've got a deadline here, August 17th. We do have the cryptocurrency market heating up, which uh, then begs the question, why is XRP pumping so hard compared to the rest of altcoins? Why in the last 24 hours are we seeing XRP at double digits and uh, you know the rest of the market just kind of staying flat or uh, staying down? Could this even be a run-up for XRP price based on perhaps something that somebody knows behind the scenes? The last letter that Telegram submitted was a request to seal additional documents. Here the SEC wants a two-day extension to submit a motion to seal the exhibits filed with Ripple's letter challenging the SEC's improper assertion. And for whatever reason, XRP kind of breaking away from the rest of the crypto market with this latest pump. Does somebody or a group of people know some insider information? It's quite possible, but I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.